All right, guys, so today we're going to talk about related rates. So let me remind you of the chain rule. So re imagine that you have a function, so y is a function of x. But now x is also going to be a function. X is going to be a function of, say, t or time. That's usually the case when you're doing physical uh, phenomena. You have y is a fu the, the coordinate y is a function of the, of the position x, and then x itself is a function of the uh, time. So whenever you take the derivative of this, so dy with respect to time, so how is y changing with respect to time, given that you have a dependence of y and x, and x has a dependence of um, with respect to t, then what you get is it would be the dependence of y with respect to x times the dependence of x with respect to the time. That was our chain rule, right? That, that if you could, you don't cancel because these are not quotients, this is just the derivative. But if you could, just as a, as a learning tool, if you could cancel those two guys, you get dy by dt. They don't cancel, but if you could, that's what you would get, and that's how you can remember the chain rule in this, in this setup. So we're going to use this kind of situation, and uh, let's imagine that we have the following problem. Let's imagine that we have the unit circle. No, I'm not going to do trigonometry, so don't worry about it. Eh, more or less, let's say this is a particle traveling in the unit circle, and let me remind you that a particle traveling in a circle or any sorry uh, point in the unit circle will satisfy the equation x squared plus y squared equals 1. So let's assume that our particle is on the unit circle so it satisfies that equation but now we're going to assume in addition that x and y are functions of time. So you could have, for example, that x is, say, the cosine of t. I said I would do trigonometry, but here we go. And y would be the sine of t. And so the particle would be traveling uh, with that dependence, around the circle with that dependence on time. Uh, so that could be a function, but you could pick any, so as long as the functions add up to 1. All right, so if we want to know, so suppose that that is the case, uh, and if the derivative of y with respect to time at the point x comma y equals, let's do for example square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. So at the point right around 45 degrees or pi over 4, uh, if we know that that derivative is equal to uh, say 1, what is the derivative Uh, of x with respect to time at the same point. So the question is, so you have a, a particle traveling, we don't know exactly what the, um, what the functions are, it's not important at the moment, uh, because if we knew the functions we would plug them in uh, for x, solve for it, and then we take our derivatives and are able to find dy by dt. That's not what we're looking for. What we're looking for is to do it by using the chain rule. So we don't know what the function is. We just know that the derivative, whenever you're at, at um, uh, square root of 2 over 2, then the y coordinate, so the particle is moving in the y direction at one unit per unit of time, one unit of length or distance by un one unit of time. That's what that derivative is telling you. So when that is happening, what do you expect is going to happen? Well, if the, if the particle is moving up in the, it, it, at certain speed, then it has to be moving in the uh, negative direction for y. So you would already know or you would assume that dy by dt is going to be negative. But let's compute it. So we have x squared plus y squared equals to 1. And so you take your derivative with respect to time this time. This time, this time, oh, well, whatever, that's that. So you get d by dt of x squared plus y squared is equal to d by dt, so the derivative with respect to time, of 1. 
Now, this one is zero. I can do that one. Now, let's do this one. So remember, I'm going to be taking the derivative of this with respect to x, so 2x, but then dx by dt. And before I continue computing everything, let me just write out, down what I did. I computed the, express, the derivative of x squared with respect to x times the derivative of x with respect to t. Just as before, just as we did before, if we could cancel this right here, we would have gotten the derivative of x squared with respect to time, which is what I need, taking the derivative of this x squared with respect to time. So let's keep going with that same idea and take the derivative of this. Now I take the derivative of y squared with respect to y, which is 2y, and then I pay with dy dt, which again would be the derivative of y squared with respect to y times dy dt, the dy's would cancel and you would get that equals zero. All right, so at this point I got to plug the information that I know. Mm, let's see, this color is good. So dy by dt is equal to one. So I can plug that in, but there's more that is true. And let me use blue even though it's almost invisible, but that will work for us. x and y are square root of two over two. So those go here. So um, we get two times root of two over two. Now dx dt, we don't have any information. That's what we're trying to solve for. Then two times y, which is root of two over two, times dy dt, which is one equals zero. All right, so that's where we're at right now, and let's see what all we get. Um, firstly, let's subtract this term on, the, on both sides, and we get 2 root of 2 over 2. I could have canceled that 2. I didn't, which was not very wise, but from that you will see, oh, I cut that 2 below. So let me move over here and finish it, my bad. So what I had, if I cancel the two, so let's start now that I now that I have extra room, I can, or I have to do extra room, I can cancel anyways. So cancel that and I get square root of two uh, dx dt equals negative square root of two. And at that point I can divide by square root of two on both sides and get that the derivative dx dt uh, is going to be negative 1. So as I told you, if this, right at the middle, if the y coordinate is going up at a rate of 1 unit by 1 unit of time, you got to go to the left 1 unit by 1 unit of time. So it makes sense in the circle. Of course that's only true because I chose that square root of 2 over 2 square root of 2 uh, point, that point where you have that x is equal to y. If you would have chosen any other point, uh, perhaps not this one, but you see anything else in this quadrant, then you would have gotten that as y changes at a rate of 1, then x changes at a different rate. But that's why, we, that's why these are called related rates, because you have a relation that relates the two variables that depend on another one. So you're, that's what you're computing. The dependence of y with respect to x, given that, with respect to t, sorry, given that it depends on x as well. All right, so let's solve a, a, an applied problem uh, or a couple of applied problems as to make sure that this makes sense. All right, so this is a typical problem for related rates where you have a ladder that is leaning against the wall and uh, either it's going to be pushed towards the wall or pulled away from the wall. In this case, we wrote it's going to be pulled away. We say it's a 10-foot ladder. So we know that from here to here we'll have 10, 10 feet. And um, we're going to be pulling it away. So maybe I write it like that. So it's going to be dx by dt. It's going to be going in this direction. So it's going to be positive because the, because the distance is growing when you pull it away. If you would be pushing it against the wall, then the, 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 the change would be negative because it would be getting smaller. 
but since the distance is getting larger, it's going to be positive, and they tell us this is a 1 feet per second. And so it's going to be pulled away, and naturally, the, the, the ladder will slide down on the wall as it's being pulled away. Um, so the question is, how fast is it, is it going to be sliding down, given that we know how fast it's going to be pulled away? So what do we know? How can we relate? So remember the topic, related rates. So you got to find a way to relate x to y. And let's say that the builder was a good builder, and this is a 90 degree angle. If I'd be building it, it probably wouldn't be a 90 degree angle, but it's a good builder, so it's 90 degree. So what you have right there is a right triangle. And what do we know about the sides of the, the right triangles? We know that when we sum the square, so x squared plus y squared, we get the square of what? Of the hypotenuse. So we get 100, which is 10 squared. So we get 100 square feet there. All right, so we have a, a, a way to relate the, um, to relate these two quantities, so now we want to compute, remember the topic, related rates. So now we have to compute rates. So to compute rates, you compute the derivative with respect to time. So we have our relation, now we use that to relate the rates. Take the derivative with respect to time on both sides, just as we did before. Again, zero. This is a very common mistake to forget and write 100, write zero. So again, as I did before, I don't have to go into detail this time. You take the derivative and you pay with the derivative with respect to t. You take the derivative and pay with the derivative with respect to t. And remember, not 100, 0. So that's what you need to remember. So now we plug in the numbers that we know. Uh, and at the moment, I know that x is going to be 1 because they tell me uh, sorry, 2. My goodness. I said that the base of the ladder was 2 feet away, not, not 1, 2. Uh, and now dx dt, that's the one that is 1, because I'm told that this is going to be moving at a rate of 1 feet per second. And now the units, remember, this is going to be in feet. Feet per second, you have feet squared per second, or square feet per second. Um, now here I get 2y. And y is something I still need to compute. So how do I compute y? Well, remember that you are on this, you have to satisfy this relation. So if you get x squared plus y squared equals 100, and you plug in x is equal to 2, you get 2 squared plus y squared is equal to 100. You subtract those four on both sides. You get then that y squared is going to be equal to 96. And so y is going to be the positive square root of 96. And let me see how much I can simplify this one. OK, so we simplify that, which I didn't want to do in public. So I took a minute and I edited it out. Now I do dy by dt we cannot do anything about. Because that's exactly what I'm trying to find out. How fast does it slide down? So what that's telling me is that the derivative, I hope, is negative because it's going to be going down. The, the y uh, quantity is going to be getting smaller because the ladder is, slow, is sliding down. So let's go ahead and, and, and subtract here 4 on both sides, which is this guy. And we get 2 times 4, so we get 8 squared of 6 dy dt equals negative 4. So now we can divide, and we have that dy by dt is going to be equal to, when I divide by 8, I get 1 half. So I'm going to have negative 1 over 2 squared of 6 feet per second. Remember that this whole quantity was feet, square feet per second, and I'm dividing by feet here, so I get just feet per second. So that is negative, which is, it tells me that it's going down uh, a lot slower. So as you move in this direction, one feet per second, this is going down a lot slower. And uh, towards the end, it's going to be the opposite. It's going to be dropping down faster, and this is going to be dropping a little bit slower. 
Um, but anyways, that's, that's the idea of related rates. You're going to have to find, firstly, a relation for, to relate the variables you're trying to compute the related rates for. So that's going to be given in the problem in some, in some sort of geometric way. You're going to take your derivative to find the rates, and then you're going to solve. And there are going to be times when you're going to need to solve for one of the variables, but they're not going to be given, just as it happened right now. But I think this helps, and uh, if you have any questions, let me know, and, uh, and I'll see you in the next video.